prestigious early suffragettes were maligned, ridiculed, beaten up and imprisoned for demanding something as blasphemous as the right to vote. There are still 210 awards where women get uh, are paid on a female rate and get ten to a dollars a week less just because they're female. First, when one thinks back, what a remarkable thing it was that an all-male parliament in New Zealand voted for women to be able to vote. But that was an essential first step in the political emancipation of women. 1919, uh, the right to stand in elections came. 1933, the first woman MP. 1947, the first woman cabinet minister. But all these things became possible because of the right to vote being won. I'm sure Kate today would not want us to keep going back to 125 years saying this is the benchmark. She'd be wanting us to forge our own path for gender equality. When I talked to my mother and father about why they decided to immigrate to New Zealand, because my father had many invitations from around the world, he was an Olympics gymnastics coach, he said that one of the reasons they decided to come to New Zealand and not to the US or not to Japan uh, was because New Zealand was the first in the world to give women the vote. And since he had four daughters, he thought they might do better here. We have largely achieved um, legal equality. Uh, there are very few hard letter, black letter laws that uh, discriminate against women. There's very little there. But the de facto equality, we're, we're far from that. But generally, I think the suffragists would be horrified by the sorts of human rights issues faced by women and their families that still exist in New Zealand. We don't have 50-50 um, female and male members of parliament. We are so far from gender equity at the top levels of business, it's not even funny, and we're going nowhere. There is a problem with women being paid equally for equal work. And it's even worse for Māori and Pacifica women. And it's simply not fair. And we need to right that wrong. Me Too has exposed uh, it in the workplace, and I suspect there's a lot more that could be exposed. But the violence in the home is extremely worrying. And I think we need a national reflection this year uh, on this as a remaining serious blight on many women being able to realise their aspirations. We still live uh, in a world where women are under a voluntary curfew. We don't go out alone, and sometimes don't go out, and there are places we don't go to. There are hundreds, no, thousands of Kiwi women who still feel constrained and feel they cannot speak out. Sexism and rape culture and the, your different because you're a girl, a little bit less good at stuff because you're a girl. That's like something I've experienced my whole life. Disabled women in New Zealand fall far short of equality with other females on a range of areas, um, particularly employment. It's 125 years later this year that we've seen the suffrage petition uh, make change for New Zealand women. We need a major change now to bring equality to this country. When we say that women got the vote in 1893, we're actually um, completely skimming over the top of a, another whole history in which actually women had the vote, and that's Māori history. You know, we have so many uh, strong female rangatira in history who had a say and actually in some cases were the leaders, they were in charge. So I think that the idea of suffrage is an incredible achievement for New Zealand, but I think we also need to broaden our understandings of that term. Dominant groups in society need to create space and bring our women, bring us to the table so we can help them create better places for all women.